who were the Mamluks. The slave warriors of medieval Islam overthrew their masters, defeated the Mongols and the Crusaders and established a dynasty that lasted 300 years. He Mamluks ruled Egypt and Syria from 1250 until 1517, when their dynasty was extinguished by the Ottomans. But Mamluks had first appeared in the Abbasid Caliphate in the 9th century and even after their overthrow by the Ottomans they continued to form an important part of Egyptian Islamic society and existed as an influential group until the 19th century. They destroyed the Crusader kingdoms of Utrame, and saved Syria, Egypt and the holy places of Islam from the Mongols. They made Cairo the dominant city of the Islamic world in the later Middle Ages, and under these apparently unlettered soldier statesmen's rule, craftsmanship, architecture and scholarship flourished. Yet the dynasty remains virtually unknown to many in the West. The word Mamluk means owned and the Mamluks were not native to Egypt but were always slave soldiers, mainly Kwipchok Turks from Central Asia. Islamic society, like that of medieval Christendom, took the form of a theoretical pyramid of fealty with the king or sultan at the top and numerous petty lords at its base with each lord above them holding rights of loyalty over them. The Mamluks, who had been taken from their families in their youth and had no ties of kin in their new homelands, were personally dependent on their master. This gave the Mamluk state divorced as it was from its parent society, a solidity that allowed it to survive the tensions of tribalism and personal ambition, through establishment of interdependency between the lower orders and sergeants and the higher lords. The Mamluks lived almost entirely within their garrisons. The Mamluks' opportunity to overthrow their masters came at the end of the 1240s, a time when the Kurdish Ayyubid dynasty, set up by Saladin in the 1170s, had reached a modus vivendi with the Crusader states. Skirmishing, rather than outright war, was the order of the day in Syria and the Holy Land. However, events in the east were beginning to impact on the region. The Mongols on the eastern steppes were attacking western Chinese tribes and advancing into southern Russia, pushing other peoples west. In 1244, with the tacit support of the Ayyubids in Cairo, Jerusalem fell to a wandering band of Cramians, an eastern Persian group who were themselves fleeing the Mongol destruction of their fledgling empire. The Mongols completed their conquest of Syria by the near annihilation of the assassin sects and by overrunning the kingdoms of Anatolia. Only Egypt, a few isolated cities in Syria and the Arabian Peninsula were left to Islam in its historic heartland. The Mamluk Sultanate, in power for less than a decade, had shown few signs of enduring. It was led by Sultan Chus who had seized power in November 1259 and was still consolidating his authority. Yulgu sent envoys to Kchus in Cairo demanding his surrender. Kchus killed the envoys and placed their heads on the gates of the city, considering treaty with the Mongols to be impossible and that exile into the bloodthirsty desert was equivalent to death. Kchus mobilized and was joined by Bibers. At this point news arrived that the Mongol great Khan monk had died, and Hulgu returned to Karakorum to support his branch of the family's claim on power. The remaining Mongol army in Syria was still formidable. And met at Ain Jalat on 8th of September. Follow. Translated and explained by Ahmed Falyu.